Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Monsters of the Deep. As always, I'm your host, Mr. G. Now, some of you might have noticed that I've been cutting off my series a bit earlier. Now, for Nightmares of Nature and Monsters of the Deep, that's because I considered the Invasive Species episode the, the first one of their runs, so that's why they only had three episodes. But for Toxic Terrors and Strange Wonders, it's because the next creature I have to talk about in those series, uh, they both would be a whole family discussion. I don't think the family would fit in the theme. Like, the next Strange Wonder card I have to look at is Hissing Cockroaches. So I'd talk about cockroaches in general, but cockroaches I do not want to classify as strange wonders since they clearly belong in Tiny Terrors, and the next toxic terror is the Crown of Thorns starfish, and I want to talk about starfish in general, but not all starfish are toxic! So yeah, what I'm saying is, I don't know what to do. If you guys think you have an answer, please tell me. I know I'm getting off topic, let's just get into today's video. So, in the ocean there are plenty of strange fish. I mean, I made an entire video about strange sharks, and uh, those are fish, as we all know. But one of the most famous strange fish is the eels. Not the electric eel. I already made a video featuring electric eels, and as I said in that video, they're not actually eels. So we're not talking about them here. Anyway, eels are fish in the angliform order, distinctive from other fish thanks to their long serpentine-like bodies. Some species of eels don't even have pectoral fins. Instead, they swim by moving their entire body. Well... That's pretty much basic eel traits. Let's look at some specific eels, because eels are a very diverse group lifestyle-wise. And to start out, let's start with the most famous eel, the moray. Moray eels are quite recognizable thanks to having a face only a mother could love. Unlike other fish, morays aren't actually able to open their gills, so instead they have to actively suck water into their mouth in order to breathe. This is the reason why you always see them opening and closing their mouth, by the way. Unlike something like a great white shark, which has serrated teeth made for tearing flesh, Omori's teeth are more pointed, which allows them to get a better grip on slippery play like octopi. Huh, what do you know? You need pointed teeth, not serrated teeth, to hunt squid. Isn't that an interesting fact that definitely has no relation to a certain theory about a certain extinct shark eating a certain uh, abyssal creature? It's just something I want to point out. Isn't that an interesting fact? Anyway, speaking of hunting, morays are ambush predators. They stay completely still in crevices, and when something swims by, they grab them and eat them. And although they aren't snakes, they can still open their jaws pretty wide. And finally, some morays actually hunt alongside groupers. So, yeah, that's interesting. Some species of eel are actually freshwater, such as the European eel, which lives in rivers throughout the European continent. Oh, finally an interesting European animal! Anyway, these guys don't have much to talk about except for their breeding. These guys are pretty much reverse salmon. Since while salmon are saltwater fish that breed in freshwater, the European eel is a freshwater fish that breeds in saltwater. See, when it's time to breed, the European eels will swim out into the ocean and make their way to the Sargasso Sea to have their babies. And when the babies hatch, they return to the rivers from whence their parents came. Then there's snipe eels, which are creatures I should have talked about in my abyssal fish video, but I didn't realize they were abyssal fish until I started researching them. Anyway, they snipe fish. Get it? Snipe eels? They snipe fish? Ha 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 Moving on. Then we have garden eels. Cute little eels that, that got their name because they bury themselves so they always have a portion of their body in the sand and throw it around like blades of grass. And when threatened, they duck into their barrows. Seriously, just look at these guys. They're adorable. Finally, we got conger eels, which are among some of the largest eels on the planet. Besides that, they're pretty typical eels, with one interesting thing to talk about. When it's time to reproduce, these guys will leave the shallow waters and head to the deep parts of the ocean. On their way, their skeletons become lighter, their teeth fall out, and they pretty much become more gelatinous. Their eyes widen in order to, in order to get more sunlight in these deep parts of the ocean. And then they have their babies. And then they die. Yeah, they're one of those species. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at the cards. Well, for the moray, it claims that morays are a genus when they're a family, so 9 out of 10. Conger eel only lists the European conger, even though there are multiple other conger eels, so 9 out of 10. But the snipe eels are fine. And for some reason, the ribbon eel has its own car despite being a moray. I don't know why. Oh, but on the back, it says that they're only relatives of morays. That's like saying polar bears are relatives of bears. So yeah, 9 out of 10. Now let's talk about human relationships. Eels are one of those animals that are often made fun of for uh, their appearance. Especially morays. Like I said earlier, they have a face only a mother could love. 
But eels are pretty popular in aquariums, especially moray and garden eels, so that's something. If you see an eel in media, expect it to be a moray with electric powers, because that's usually how eels are portrayed. The only two exceptions I can think of off the top of my head where they show eels and they aren't electric are the Little Mermaid and Spongebob. Those are the only two non-educational media I can think of that doesn't do this. And it's weird too, because moray eels look nothing like electric eels. There are saltwater species and electric eels are freshwater. And, and like I said, electric eels aren't even eels. Anyway, some countries also eat eels, such as England, where they have jellied eels, which is eel meat coated in savory gelatin. Anyway, freshwater eel meat, known as unagi, is a delicacy in Japan, being served as fillets and sushi and more. However, this meat has become pretty controversial in recent years due to the global decline in freshwater eel populations. For example, the European eel is critically endangered. Honestly, I think I would still try eel though, but... The one problem holding me back is that I don't really like baked fish, it has a weird aftertaste to me, so I don't think eel would be any different. If any of you have tried eel and you can attest that it tastes noticeably different, maybe I'll try it. But what am I even talking about? What, wait, what am I even talking about anymore? I don't know. Well, that's all for this episode of Monsters of the Deep. Join us next time when we talk about- Ah, ah dang it, it's another problem card! Okay, new plan. You guys tell me what I do with the upcoming problem cards. Tell me what to do about pufferfish, crown of thorns, starfish, and hissing cockroaches because I do not know what to do with them. Goodbye.